Hi guys, thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. And this is a really special one because this is an Amy's Crypt live. This is my first live ever. So thank you all for being here and thank you for tuning in. And it's so cool to see you guys in this chat on screen. We've got Paranormal Voice, Tanya, Patricia, uh, Sushil, hopefully I'm saying that right. Anna, Zombie, oh my God, thank you guys all so much and thank you for everyone that was already in the live chat there's a lot of people that i talk to all the time in my youtube comments that i've already seen in there we've got paranormal resident i've seen we've got steve uk it's really great to see you guys and i'm i'm really nervous <laughs> but i think my excitement is overcoming my nerves so we're all good so hi everyone uh, really excited. There's a whole lot to talk about today. I want you guys to start asking questions, get involved in that live chat now because this is a q and I'm going to be taking as many questions as humanly possible <laughs> um, from you guys. Jared is actually here to help me moderate. He's going to be picking out some of the questions from live chat and we're going to have them on screen and I'm going to answer as many as I can for you guys. But we have a lot of big Amy's Crypt news and a lot of people have been asking me to do a live stream for a long, long time. And I thought I need to do it. It's definitely time to go live with you guys. So let's get straight into it and talk a little bit about that thumbnail. So you guys probably have seen this, I'm guessing. It's over live Q&A and... I'm sure that a lot of you have questions about this one. I had people think that my YouTube channel was coming to an end. People thought Jared and I were breaking up, getting a divorce. He looks pretty, um, I'm going to say pissy, standing back there in the thumbnail. Um, I had a few people think that I was pregnant and it was none of those things actually. So my channel is here to stay. We're going to keep providing you guys with a lot of content. But something big has come to an end for me and that big thing is my year-long travel. So I'm coming at you live from my hometown of little old Adelaide in South Australia. So born and raised here. For the past 12 months, Jared and I have travelled, lived out of a backpack, slept on the floor in dormitories, slept on trains, buses, and we travelled as far as we could and it's all over and that's kind of sad for me because that was one of my lifelong dreams so now that that dream is over I've got to start thinking about okay what's my next goal what's my next dream that I want to achieve but I do want to fill you guys in on what that means for Amy's Crypt so I'm not traveling full-time anymore which is sad but that doesn't mean that the videos are going to stop what you guys probably some of you probably have guessed, but some of you might not know, is Jared and I have been filming in Overdrive and working in Overdrive while we've been traveling. So I have so many investigations, so much exploring from all different countries all around the world, videos that you guys haven't seen before in a backlog ready to go. So I have a lot of editing to do and I have a lot of things to share with you guys. So I do get a lot of people like, oh, what's going on, Amy? You're in India this week. Now you're in Europe. Now you're in Asia. And that's not the case. It's just that we did a lot of filming in all of these countries and places that we visited. And then we kind of just released videos willy-nilly as I feel like releasing whatever one. But I have massive videos lined up and a lot to come. And what also is awesome is I am going to start exploring a lot of my own country. So you guys are going to get haunts from my hometown as well as all around Australia. I was actually just in Sydney and I went to one of the most awesome places I've ever investigated and that's known as the Q Station or the Sydney Quarantine Station. And I got a sort of like private tour and I got to do a lot of investigating and that one's coming really soon to my channel. So that'll probably be my first Aussie haunt just because I'm really excited about it. Now because I am home and I know Amy's Crypt has only been floating around on the internet for just over a year but Jared and I have actually been living abroad for four years so I haven't been home in a long time and I haven't connected with a lot of friends and family still and I mean it's been really great seeing everyone. I've actually been home for about two weeks. You guys probably didn't even know that. <laughs> but just reconnecting with my loved ones. So that is why today I've swapped out posting a video for you guys and giving you the live stream to inform you. 
on Wednesday coming, because you guys know I post every Wednesday, every Sunday. Wednesday coming, there's not going to be a video. I'm really sorry, but I'm taking a little bit of a break uh, just to deal with being back home, seeing everyone and just getting my head wrapped around, you know, sleeping in the same bed for more than three nights at a time. <laughs> so a lot of stuff coming. Uh, when I do come back, I will be back on Sunday to post a video. And that one is going to be a premiere. And I know you guys have been waiting a long time for it and I've been a little bit cruel holding it back from you guys, but on Sunday I'm going to be premiering my first Paris Catacombs video. And guys, I am actually so proud of this video. I think it's one of the best pieces of editing that I've ever done. Um, I actually have a little surprise for you guys on this live stream. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of that video. I also have a part two Paris Catacombs where I go into the forbidden section of the catacombs, which is a little bit naughty of me. You're not supposed to go in there, but it's really dark, really intense. I do paranormal investigation over there. I also have a sneak peek of that part two. So we've got Wednesday coming is off. Sunday is part one Paris Catacombs. Wednesday is part two ca Paris Catacombs. They're both going to be premiered. And if you stay on this live stream towards the end, you're going to see sneak peeks for both of those videos. And I'm really, really excited to present those to you all. So I just, I have a few other notes, sorry, that I need to go through just so that I uh, stay on track here. So Jared and I have been working on a lot of different projects and it has, to be honest, been really, really hard while we've been on the road to achieve all of the things that we want to do. But now that I have a big backlog of videos and I can take a step back on filming for a little while, I have more time because I'm at home, I'm not on a train or a bus every day, I can actually work on bringing you guys more and bigger, better things. Um, so one cool thing, which is very, very exciting for me, is we've just released a store. So I have... Amy's Crypt merch and I'm so excited about it. So I have a uh, little uh, logo shirts. I have the Amy's Crypt um, across hoodies, shirts, mugs. We even have, because it was actually requested, uh, babies and toddlers. And I thought it would be really cute to have adult Crypt Keeper shirts, but then for the babies or the toddlers, it actually says Crib Keeper. And I just think that's the funniest, sweetest thing. There's also stickers and all sorts. And this is all available on amyscrypt.com. We have a little store tab and I believe I put a link for it in the video description as well. So if you guys want to check out any of that stuff, if you want uh, some Amy's Crypt merch, we finally have it. And I know that you guys have been waiting a long time for that. And it's just exciting for me to show you guys all that. Plus... There's been a little overhaul on amyscrypt.com. I don't know if you guys know, but every video that I release, I also write a full blog article and have a lot of my photos that I take and edit all uh, myself. So if you guys follow me on Instagram and you enjoy any of those photos, you're going to find a lot more on amyscrypt.com. But Jared did a lot of hard work on that and I can't thank him enough. I think it looks fantastic. So I don't know. That's just another cool thing that we've going on. Now, Jared is here and he just passed me a secret special note and it is a super chat and it came from paranormal voice and paranormal voice have been supporting me for a while guys and they're really lovely and they have their own channel and thank you so much i, I truly appreciate that from the bottom of my heart like all you guys tuning in super chats anything like that all of the money that I earn from Amy's Crypt, I just put right back into Amy's Crypt to try and provide you guys more content, better content, um, and just keep going on this journey. It's been really cool to grow this community and just, it's so cool that all you people are here like with me on this chat and I'm just kind of overwhelmed by it all. It's so, so, so nice. But I think that we can start uh, with some questions. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I mean, we've got a wrong side. <laughs> Amy's Crypt Live up and we had the chats coming up when I opened this up. So Jared's actually helping me build this new tool because we have these grandiose ideas of going out and doing like paranormal investigations and we're working on different ways to make it as um, interactive with you guys as possible. I really like to create videos where it feels like you guys are on the journey with me and I think doing live investigations is the next step. 
So we're working on a lot of different uh, tools that we can use uh, to do really cool live investigations, things that you might not have seen um, done in this way on YouTube before. So we're working on a lot of stuff with that. But I think it's time to get into some questions. And I know that there's already been some in the chat. I, I opened this up three days ago and I mean, we were already getting questions. So I'm excited to answer all you guys can throw at me, so. Just waiting for Jared. Having, <laughs> having a little... Uh... Oh, we're having a technical difficulty. Okay, so this is actually a test for this new tool. Um, and we haven't, we've done a little test, but I didn't know how it was going to go in this live format. But I do have a question from Gabriella Cardona. Just re-watching last Sunday episode of Game of Thrones before tonight. Big episode at nine. Any Game of Thrones fans here? Yes, I'm a Game of Thrones fan. Thank you uh, for bringing that up. I actually planned this live stream so that it came on just before Game of Thrones because I'm sure there's a lot of people watching that do not want to miss Game of Thrones and I don't want to miss it either. So if you guys uh, are going to watch, like, jump in the live chat and let me know because that's really, really cool. All right, so we got another one. Uh, someone, thank you for the question, someone. Have you been to Capuchin, oh, I don't know how to say this one, I'm going to slaughter it, Capuchin Catacombs in Italy. We were looking at it and we never actually made it while we were there, but I think that it would be really cool to go and see. I do like, you know, guys, I love all the creepy stuff and going into catacombs is something awesome. I've actually been in quite a few around Europe and I love them. I mean, the Paris catacombs was just something else. Like you go through the tourist section, which obviously you guys will see in my video, but the kind of uncharted forbidden section is just insane. It's yeah, I don't even know how to describe it to you. I'm really excited to show the videos and show you all what it was like down there. Dark, scary, a lot, a lot of bones and stuff going on. So, I don't know, it was really cool. So another chat, uh, Bruce Huss, Batman. Yes, Batman. Um, I, would I would like to see Amy go to Myrtle's Plantation in Louisiana. I would like to go to Meadows Plantation. So when I was uh, living in the States, I did go and visit uh, New Orleans. And I didn't make it to Myrtles, but I made it to some of the other plantations. So I think I really want to go. I think you can actually stay there. I reckon um, another YouTuber who I watch, Michael Scott, might have stayed there. Or maybe I'm getting mixed up with another one. But I would love to go. There's so many places in the States that I want to go and investigate and check out and I we kind of have plans to go back so don't you guys worry like we're probably going to head back over there oh so Jared's giving me another secret note <laughs> this is cute I feel like I'm in um school and I'm getting little love letters <laughs> um yeah I'm pretty lame but we've got a paranormal resident uh Katie oh gosh Jared N Nick Vovis Lacon, The Revenge. I hope that I got that right. I'm really sorry, but thank you so much, guys. This is amazing. Like, and Steve K. Oh, guys, you're warming my heart today. <laughs> I'm so appreciative of everyone here, and that just means the absolute world to me. So that'll be all that super chat money is going to be used to get me to my next haunted location and I think that we're planning a road trip to go to an Aussie outback ghost town pretty soon maybe this week maybe next week so oh Jared got it working okay guys this is a live question and we actually have it on screen and I'm going to keep pointing the wrong way but live question from Ryan Davis Ryan is really cool I always talk to Ryan in my comments he's always watching so good how much does it cost to travel the world for a year it costs a lot of money <laughs> Um, I actually don't, Jared's kind of the finance person, so I can't put a number on it, but travel can be affordable if you work hard and make it affordable. So I always get a lot of people asking me, oh, are you rich? Or sometimes I'll get a snooty comment that's like, must have a rich husband, Pfft, Jared, <laughs> or must have a rich daddy or something, you know, but honestly, 
traveling the world was all off my own back. That's my life savings, basically. This is something that I've always wanted to do. Basically how I do it, I live a minimalistic lifestyle. So I don't have the fanciest shoes, clothing, or like the latest new purse. You guys have probably seen what I wear, like half my clothes have holes in them. <laughs> so I live on the cheap and when I travel, I, you know, sleeping in hostels, so dormitory style accommodation can save you a lot of money. You can share meals, you can cook your own food if you get a place with um, a kitchen. You could travel by ground rather than flying everywhere. So much cheaper. You can go on an overnight bus and sleep on the bus. It's not very pleasant, but that saves you a night accommodation. There's so many things that we did to travel cheap. And it's something that you don't really see on my channel, but it is very hard. It is a lot of fun though. So it's just a different way of looking at travel. I know most people when they go on a holiday and I, I don't blame them when you get, you know, two weeks off a year, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to go hard and do everything I want to do and, you know, splurge on everything. That's not how you can travel if you travel for a whole year. You need to budget. <laughs> so we lived pretty cheap, but... That's, I can't really put a number on it. It's a good question though. Oh, we have another live question. I'm so happy that these are popping up on screen now. That makes me really excited. Okay, Patricia, why are there four thumbs down already? Are there troll haters in the house? You know, I don't know if they're troll haters. I reckon they just sin the thumbnail for this live stream and they got so upset that they thought that Amy's crypt was coming to an end. Nah, honestly, I think that they're haters. <laughs> So unfortunately, um, there are people out there that will just dislike videos just because they don't like you for whatever reason. I don't know what that reason is. But in all honesty, I actually don't mind getting the dislikes on my video. Every time I post a video, the second it goes out, there's always a dislike that pops up straight away. And I know there's someone out there that has notifications on every single video. They're really on top of it as well. As soon as I post a video, they're on there to dislike it. And I reckon I have about 10 or 11 haters because I always get at least that many dislikes. Um, the thing is when I post a new video, if I don't see those dislikes pop up straight away, I know the video isn't doing very well because not even my haters are there to hate on it. So if I get a, a video and it gets a few dislikes, I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're on track. Like everyone's seeing it. They're getting the, the haters are getting their notifications. We're all good. <laughs> But yeah, there's people out there that don't like me. I don't, I don't know why. I'm okay, I guess. All right, so live question. Ah, Cece, how are you? Cece's Paranormal Adventures. Thank you for the question. Can you please come to USA? We have a ghost town. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I, ca I don't have a date, but Jared and I are talking about it a lot and potentially moving back there for a while so that we can do a bunch of filming. And I really did love it in the States. And I feel like there's a lot of ground, a lot more places to see and cover there. So I lived in San Francisco for three years and then we traveled. But I feel like during that time, I didn't get to see a lot of the country, which I wish I did more of. I got a job and I got so engrossed in that and to be honest a little depressed that I didn't live to the fullest in the States. There's a lot of places that I want to go visit. Plus Amy's Crypt didn't really like come to be until right at the end of the trip. So we weren't out there filming. Like I did visit a lot of haunted places because it's been an interest for a long time of mine. So I was still taking some photos and posting them on Instagram and all that kind of good stuff. But I need to go over and investigate. And Ghost Town, I wonder what Ghost Town you're talking about. I've been to Bodie, which is in California, and I love that place. That place is amazing. But, yeah, I mean, give me your suggestions as well for where you want to see me investigate over in the States. I really, really want to make it back. So we have another live question. This is really cool. So we've got Megan Pierce. Thank you, Megan. This is, or if you're from America, Megan, they say it a little bit different to how I say it. Um, how long have you been interested in spirits and paranormal activity? How did you get into it? Okay, so I love this question. Now, 
I grew up as a horror fan. So I love anything dark, spooky, creepy, things that normally scare people. And like, you can see my shirt right now. <laughs> so I love horror and I was always intrigued by real horror. So ghost stories, all that, all that sort of uh, creepy stuff. And then I never really was investigating or anything like that for myself until we moved to San Francisco. So we moved to San Fran. We got an apartment in an old Victorian. It was the loveliest house. It was beautiful. And a couple of months into our stay, my parents came to visit. So we we're like, you guys have the bed. We're going to go sleep on the fold out couch in our apartment. And at 3 a.m. I woke up and I looked down the hallway and I could see a little girl standing there staring at me. And now I, I wasn't scared. I always thought, you know, if you see a ghost, it's supposed to be scary. I wasn't scared. It was just, oh, there's a little girl there. That's odd. And then I rubbed my eyes and when I opened them back up, it was like someone had turned a light off and she was gone. And I mean, that really interested me. It was, I am still a skeptic guys. So 3 a.m. I was kind of, oh, maybe I was in a dream, but it felt really, really real. And then after that, it kind of just spiked my interest and I was like, maybe it would be cool to like go to haunted places and you know, see if I see anything else. So that's what I do now. I go to these places and I investigate and I've just been going deeper and deeper into it and kind of looking for that same kind of experience because that was so full on that, I mean, it it was like there was actually a child there, just standing there. And I've had vivid dreams and sleep paralysis and all that kind of stuff before, but this did feel different. And I'm not saying it was a ghost, maybe it was in my head, but I know that at least one other person has seen that little girl in the apartment and they were literally sitting in the same place on the couch that I was when I seen her and she was in the hallway and we traded descriptions and she sounds pretty much the same as what I seen. So that's kind of how I got into all this. I also have another little love note from Jared. So super chat, Jenna Randolph. Thank you so much. That is really really lovely that <laughs> that warms my heart I can't and I can't believe that I've gotten so many like this is really cool like thank you but yeah that's kind of how I got into ghost hunting paranormal investigating whatever you kind of want to call it and then I think my interest with travel just blended with that like and then eventually the blog came, amyscrypt.com. I started writing about the places I was going because I love history. So I wanted to share the history behind the ghost stories as well as the ghost stories and what it's like to visit these places and how you can get there for yourself. Uh, so I really want it to become a resource. And then Amy's Crypt, the blog started going and then it evolved into a YouTube channel and I never thought I would be a YouTuber because I am a very nervous person on camera. And I'm not one to seek the spotlight, so <laughs> I don't know how this came to be, but I am very much enjoying it. So it's been great. It's a cool way to be creative as well. Live question from one of, guys, this is from one of my favourite YouTubers, Amy's Autopsy Report. Hi guys, my name's Amy. <laughs> I didn't do that very well, but that's what she says on her videos. If you guys like um, horror or you're into um, really obscure kind of film, Amy's Autopsy Report, she reviews all those kind of cool, funky films. And I don't know, I just love her stuff. She's It's like you're sitting in a lounge room talking to someone about horror movies or just these weird movies that you've never heard of. So I don't know, you might want to check her out. But let me actually read your question, Amy. Will you do an investigation of Area 51 or Roswell, New Mexico at the alien crash site? Also, I'll come with you. Oh my god, you'll actually come with me? Okay. Because you're coming with me, I guess I'm going to have to go now. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I actually don't know too much about these. I, I know like the basic rundown of what they are. I don't know if they're accessible or anything, but I think aliens and all those experiences are fascinating. And I... A lot of people don't know I actually have a background in psychology. So anything to do with that and human experiences, I'm really, really interested in. So 
that's also like a big part of what I do when I investigate or research ghost stories. I'm like, oh, how are they different all around the world or what are the similarities between them? Now, I have another love letter. This one. Oh, Neil Clark. Thank you, Neil. That's amazing. You guys, you guys are the best. So live question from Amy. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. So we've got another one. Uh, of another live question and another super chat from Kathy. Thank you so much, Kathy. You're amazing. You're so lovely, everyone. All right, so we've got Urbex Gen Gen. Okay, do you like The Walking Dead and do you consider zombies real horror? Do you think zombies could happen? All right, so Walking Dead, yes, I like The Walking Dead. I love Daryl. <laughs> I don't know, I think Daryl's so cool. Lately though, uh, I'm not caught up on The Walking Dead, so when we were traveling a lot, it got really hard to watch movies and TV shows, which is unfortunate because it's something that I love and I love doing, particularly horror. I mean, I've worked in cinema for a long, long time, like since I was 16 years old, worked at movie theaters. Um, so I've kind of fallen a little bit behind. I also like um, Fear the Walking Dead. I fell off the bandwagon a little bit with that one too, but. I don't know if anyone has ever made the connection, but um, part of the intro to Amy's Crypt for new episodes and such is inspired by Fear the Walking Dead. So when it comes up with that big, bah! oh God, I can't believe I did that. But when it comes up with that, that's inspired by the intro for Fear the Walking Dead. Do I consider uh, zombies real horror? You know, I do. I think that they almost have their own genre now. But zombies are definitely, like, you know, hard-rooted in horror. They've been around for a long time, and I guess they've kind of evolved. And I do like modern horror as well. So when there's, you know, like, World War Z and the zombies are crazy, you know, rather than the slow, like, brains kind of zombie. I love that, too. And do I think zombies could happen? Whew. I do have a small, I mean, we have planned out <laughs> what to do in a zombie apocalypse. And we're, while we were traveling, it was kind of hard because, you know, if you're in a big city, you're like, we're kind of goners. But if we're out in a little like country town staying in a castle or something, we're like, you know, this could be pretty good if there was a zombie apocalypse right now. And we're in this medieval castle. It's like a fortress that's built to kill, uh, keep people out. So... I don't know if it could happen. Maybe. I mean, there's definitely people out there that think it could. I love this question as well. Okay, so another little love note. This one's Steve Misfit. Thank you, Steve. You are not a misfit in my world. You are. Unless you like the band. That's cool. And I have another love note. This one's from Lisa's Life. Lisa, you're so lovely in the comments all the time and you're so lovely to give me a super chat and Jared's written $20 on it. That's amazing. You are so, so, so nice to me. What have I done to deserve all you guys? But we do have another live question. Thank you for that. Uh, Irena Lee, I hope I'm saying your names right. I'm really sorry if I'm not. Um, so terrible at pronunciation if you haven't seen me trying to do the different languages all over the world you know but my son wants to know how many haunted places you have been to over the years <sighs> I actually I'm really sorry because I can't answer that it's a lot <laughs> so I've got um I've got so many google drive lists and it's lists of all the places that I've been so places I've been places I've been and I've filmed, places I've been but I've only got photos, places that I want to go or I've organised to go, places, I don't know, I've got so many different lists. And it's got to be, if I had to, well, if I had to guess, how, Jared, I'm going to actually call upon Jared because he has a more mathematical brain than Hundreds. Me. Hundreds? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hundreds, yeah, it's a lot. But it's kind of all we do now, really. It's a cool cool way to travel, though, because we're seeing a lot of parts of different countries that tourists don't normally go to. And I'm the kind of person when I travel, I do like going to the tour touristy places and seeing, you know, the big things to see, the main sites. But it's a lot of people and I get anxious there and it's hard, always hard to film. So I love going to see, like, the little... 
off the beaten track, like abandoned thing in the jungle or something, you know. So that's what we're kind of getting about. But I love that question. Oh, another one. Uh, Ray? Ray Shepherd. That's a cool name. Uh, has anyone ever attacked you during one of your films because it was dark? I've had people attack me. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was because it was dark, but we've had, um, I spoke about it in one of my videos recently. There was a man in Romania that kind of came at me and he, I'm sure he was trying to grab my camera. My camera was, I have a neck thing and it was around my neck because I was taking photos and he kind of lunged at me. I think he might have been a bit drunk because I mean I'm not the most coordinated or nimble person by any means like I fall over all the time. He came at me and I was whoa I dodged him and I don't know then he also followed us through the graveyard so that was a bit weird but attacking I mean I don't want to bring this down but there was a little bit of a like I'll say a gra someone kind of grabbed me in a temple in India that was really horrible but I'm not going to talk too much about that on this live so there's definitely been a few instances of attacks we also have dogs attacking us um, there is there's a video I have planned on our craziest moments like Jared got mugged <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but he got mugged. Um, so yeah, there's a, a few concerning things that have happened, but it's okay. Oh, ah, the funder. Guys, the funder always comments on my videos and says the funniest things. <laughs> you always make me laugh. Thank you for uh, leaving me a question. Is Australia scarier than ghosts? Yeah. Nah, it's not really. I don't know. I don't really find ghosts scary, to be honest. A lot of people get scared of Australia because of the animals. You hear a lot about, oh, all the animals here, or the bugs, or whatever, are going to kill you. Drop bears, whatever. It's not so scary. They say that we have a lot of serial killers here. So I've been contemplating delving into true crime. There are a lot of, you know terrible things that have happened in Australia or then you have the outback it's very dangerous to go out into the middle of Australia if you don't know what you're doing um the bugs the snakes the sharks crocodiles I mean there are a lot of that around but I don't think it's any more like intense than any other country like we had a run-in with a reticulated python uh I don't know how much I should give away, but we did have a run-in with one of the few species of snakes in the world that can kill and consume a human, and it was very scary, and it is on film. You guys will see it in an upcoming video, but that wasn't in Australia, so <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens when we head out. I uh, got a lo love a love note. Um, Raiders Act. Uh, have you visited Fremantle Prison or Ardell Mental Hospital? No, I have not visited either. But I've been looking up a lot of places um, to visit uh, uh, in Australia. These places are, are Aussie haunts, if you guys didn't know. And there are a lot of old prisons here, uh, mental uh, like asylums. Uh, I don't think that's the right word for that. But... Um, there's a lot here that I want to go and check out and I think in the future I'm definitely going to make my way over there. I did a couple of places when I was in Sydney but um, when I stayed there it was mostly to catch up with one of my girlfriends who I haven't seen in a long long time and you guys will meet her in my Q station video. She had a hot flush. <laughs> oh, it's funny but you guys will, will see and meet her soon. But um, yeah there's definitely a lot of places around that I want to visit. And I don't know why this one came to me on a love note, but that's sweet. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have another live question come up. So Stephen P Padilla. I don't know. I tried to learn a bit of Sp Spanish. It might be Padilla. Sorry. <laughs> uh, question, what investigation scared you the most? Okay, so as you guys know, the paranormal stuff doesn't 
scare me so much. I get more excited when something happens. Um, so the investigation that probably scared me the most, it's normally like people that I get scared of or, you, you know, birds. The one that was the most scary was including that reticulated python incident. So that happened at the end of filming when we were headed back to the hotel. This is on a, in the middle of like a, I'll call it a jungle island off of the coast of the Philippines. And we were literally the only people staying on the island. So it would have been pretty bad if a snake, something happened. So that was scary. But something happened on that investigation, which I'm not going to talk about because the video is coming soon. And I'm actually getting a really uh, tight chest and anxiety just talking about this. I can't watch the footage from this video. I actually cried. Like, it was that scary. It was that bad. I was crying. And... I can't do it. So I think that I'm. we're going to do a special with that episode where Jared is going to edit the whole thing because I can't watch the footage. Like, I just can't. It was, um, uh, I'll give away what it was. It was a battery that was used during World War II. So I'm not going to say what scared me. Um, but it was really terrible. It was full on. And then there was a snake. And it was just, I don't know, we almost died. It was a horrible night. Um, so I have another love note here. So Hannah M plus Jordan, are you both still vegetarian plus super chat? So they they gave me a super chat and asked a question. Ah, oh, thank you. This was like a double whammy um, kind of love note. I love this. Yes, we are both still vegetarian. Jared actually wasn't vegetarian until we got to India, actually. And then when we got to India, there's actually a lot of people over there that are fully vegetarian. I think it's a, a religious thing. So it was really easy to get really good vegetarian food over there. And yeah, we did eat a lot. <laughs> um, but then when we moved, he was like, oh yeah, this isn't so hard. And he kind of started doing that too. But I mean, as you guys probably have clued on, I love animals, so I, I try my best not to eat them. But thank you so much for the super chat and the question, that's amazing. Ah, oh, okay, so we've got a, another live question. This one's from Danny. Danny is always there commenting on my videos too. Thank you so much. All right, did you go to the most haunted forest in Japan? Not yet. I'll say that. So I really want to go there. I don't actually have plans to go to Japan. But it was one of the places I really wanted to hit. Japan and China, I really, really want to see. And I'm sure there's a lot of haunted places there, particularly, you know, um, suicide forest. We didn't make it there on this trip. We kind of stuck to Southeast Asia on the way home. Um, reason being, it was cheaper. And I don't actually know what the visa requirements were to get to Japan and China. But I feel like when I go there... I need a lot of time there so I didn't want to go and just rush it and uh, spend only like a week or two there maybe if I go I would need I don't know at least a month like China is massive so I haven't been there yet but I really do want to go to the forest it's um, something that is intriguing to me uh, but also I'm just interested to get the vibe there like I'm interested in the social context of Japan and suicide and how that relates to the forest. So it's not just for paranormal, but it's, yeah, that's a, I think it'd be a really sombering place, to be honest. We have another live question. This one's from Paranormal Voice. Thank you so much. Uh, there is very little documented about Aussie haunted locations. Are there any that stand out for you that you want to visit? Yes. So one of the cool things about Australia is there are a lot of haunted places. We have a pretty dark past, you know, like there's a lot of convicts brought here and it's kind of what, you know, started the country. And I mean, there's a lot of amazing places here. Some that stick out, uh, if anyone's a really true, like Amy's Crypt fan, you might have seen some of my earliest videos, which was the Adelaide Jail and Zedwood and these places are both in my hometown and they're absolutely amazing 
and I'm going to be revisiting them so don't worry if you haven't seen the videos or you go back and watch the videos and they're really terribly done because that was very early on in my YouTube career so I had no idea how to edit or what I was doing but I definitely want to make it back to those. We also have the Monte Cristo household. That is like the most haunted house. That's the big famous one here in Australia. And I believe that you can go stay there. It's supposed to be super haunted. And I have my eyes set on that. I haven't organized anything or planned anything. But there's a lot of places here. That would probably be my big one though. Monte Cristo. And I do want to make my way back to some of the Adelaide haunts. So here we go, another love letter. Uh, Daniel Smith, what country would you like to visit and why? Hmm, I oh, there's so many that I want to visit. I mean, Japan is a really big one for me. And also, I want to go to Egypt. I really want to see the pyramids. I know it's probably super touristy and, and all that, but I don't care. <laughs> I want to go see them. Uh, there's too many countries to just pick one. God, Sir Spooks asked me a question. I am honoured. <laughs> Sir Spooks has like the best, spookiest channel, guys. So I think that you should go check him out. Like go watch his videos. You, you just need to watch one and then you'll just be on it all night watching spooky stuff till, you know, early as hours of the morning. Uh, so he wants to know what the scariest place I've investigated. And don't worry that you're late to the live stream. I'm super like appreciative that you're here. Like that means... Everything. Uh, scariest place to have investigated. Okay, so the catacombs were pretty scary, which, and this might be my last question before I show you the part one trailer for my catacombs series. Uh, catacombs, the forbidden section was scary just because we went down through a manhole on a sh busy street in Paris with a guy who... He was actually great. He's a cataphile and took us down. He was amazing. But when we met him, he was a stranger. <laughs> so we go down into this, you know, darkness. We're crawling through tiny little holes, which you guys will see in this snippet when I get to it. Um, bones everywhere. We were down there for hours. It was, it was just crazy. So that's one of the scariest. I also think Le Noria. Not for paranormal, just because... It's in the middle of the driest desert in the world, the Atacama Desert. You hike out, there's holes everywhere because there's the mining company who have also blocked off all road access to the place. So we hiked in the middle of the desert, there's open mine shafts everywhere. Vultures were circling us. Vultures also attacked Jared's bag when he left it like a bozo. But let's not get too much into that. Then you get to the graveyard, there's all the skeletons coming up. And we had to hike back to the car in the middle of the night in the pitch black and kind of got a, lost a few times and there was holes everywhere. So that one was scary, but scariest for paranormal activity, we went to this place in Malaysia called the 99 Doors Mansion. And I don't know, that place seems like it was active. If I was going to say any places like haunted, I'd probably say that we caught some, I actually caught some crazy stuff on camera and I'm really excited for this episode and to show you guys because man we, I don't know, Jared's more skeptical than I am and even he was like what the, I'm not going to swear on this live stream, I'm trying really hard not to because I can't bleep it out like I normally do but he was like what the, was that, you know, it was pretty weird and I have another love note but I'm going to save this one and I'm going to play my Paris Catacombs video for you. This is kind of like the intro slash trailer for my part one. And this is in the tourist section, tourist side of the catacombs. So part one is kind of like the tourist section. Part two is like a full length, full on investigation inside the forbidden section. So without further ado, I'm going to hit play on this one and I hope that you guys like it because I'm super super proud of it.
actually hope that that played all right because we are actually testing all this technology now. But I really hope that you guys liked that. We kind of, I don't know, I spent a long, long time editing that whole video together and it's one of the videos that I'm most proud of because I have no background in video or film, like, I don't know, editing or anything like that. So I feel like I've come a long way. I could still improve, but... <laughs> That video, I'm super, super proud of that video. So as I said before, that was filmed in the Taurus section of the catacombs and I did that because I really wanted to give an overview of the history of the catacombs, also why many people believe it's haunted and it's ghost stories. Um, and just show you that place because that one is actually really beautiful. Like you walk through and all the skulls are lined up in ornately decorated bone stacks and everything. It's just amazing. And that, I wanted to show that first to contrast to my part two video where it's not maintained. It's like the bone, you, you'll see soon because I have a trailer to show in a little bit after I take a few more questions of that one. But it's totally different down there. Like graffiti, there's, you know, sections where they have parties and I don't know, it's just amazing down there. But I'm going to get back to this question. And Jared just informed me this is also question plus super chat. From Water Goddess Casey. Oh, you are so sweet. You're so great to me. Okay, so why do you think ghosts like haunting bathrooms? I don't know. It's a really weird place to want to haunt. I went to this one place um, in Vancouver. I don't have a video on this, sorry. It's one of the spaghetti factories, which I think is a chain. And there was a ghost that haunted that bathroom. And oh, I forget what his name was. He had this really like creepy nickname. Oh, I think it was Looky Lou. Looky Lou. So he was, some people said he was like a leprechaun or something, this little um, redhead man. And he would spy on you through the crack in, in the door. I don't know. I don't know what the appeal is. Maybe it's just like there were creepy people in life and now they're like, well, I can just haunt a toilet <laughs> um, or a bathroom. Sorry, as you say in the States. Oh, we have a question from Neil Clark. Is there any places in the near future to do any invest investigations live as one-offs maybe? Yes. So we're still obviously figuring out this technology that we're using. That's why I'm getting all these love notes. <laughs> um, but some live investigations. We've been talking about some places in Adelaide that I really want to hit. And I really want to go live from some really cool places. I don't have anything planned yet. So I'm not going to spit out any locations just in case anything comes up and I can't actually access them. But we're probably going to start, um, we were thinking maybe with a graveyard, it's a very famous graveyard here in South Australia. Maybe starting with that, just uh, seeing how we go because it's there's a lot of t new tools that we want to test out and just having these questions on screen like this and these overlays is one, one of those. So it's about making these lives more interactive and really bringing you guys in um, on everything with us. So I don't have any planned out, but there are big plans in my brain. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go to one of my little love note papers. Uh, Penny Pow and Jeff. Oh, Penny and Jeff, you guys are the sweetest. You're so nice to me. Um, what, what state would you live in if you were to come back to the US? So... We did live in California for three years and that was in San Francisco. And I actually wasn't the biggest fan of living in San Francisco, which I wish I was. I don't know. I, I think maybe because it was my job as well. Like everything kind of just was overwhelming there. But we have spoken about going back and maybe moving to LA. Um, I think if we do head back, California would be the easiest for us just because we know it we've lived there and we do have a kind of support base there we've got um a lot of friends over there so and a lot of people I would love to catch up with so I reckon that that would probably be where I land but I would want to travel pretty wide and I know you guys invited me to dinner once and that's so lovely <laughs> um but yeah also, when I get these papers, this means that you guys have super chatted me as well as sent me a question and that's really lovely. That that means everything to me. Thank you. Um, live question from Taco Explorations. That's a really cool name. I like that. 
Uh, how do you get a question answered? You just got one answered. <laughs> so just put your questions in the chat and Jared is kind of grabbing them and putting them in this tool and lining them up and I mean I don't think I'm going to be able to answer everyone's questions but if you leave me comments on this live chat after you guys know I always do my best to answer as many comments basically all the comments I get I do my best so if you have questions that don't get covered in this live stream feel free to leave me a comment um I have another love note um Oh, some people are still asking what's over. This isn't from, this is a love note from all of yours. So what's over is my year long trip around the world. So that was a dream of mine and it has come to an end because I miss my family. I'm homesick. I was getting sick on the road a lot, like physically and mentally. I had to come home and we're going to be in Australia for a while because I need, I really want to reconnect with all my friends and family before we head off again. But there is definitely going to be, I've got the travel bug guys. It's a real thing. Um, I'm going to be off traveling at some point. I just know I can't stay in one spot too long. I don't think now. So we've got Jack Brown. Hey Jack, thank you. You're always in my comments as well. Uh, what do you think of Waverly Hills Sanatorium? I want to go there. I've heard and seen a lot about this place and that is, I do have like a bucket list of all of these places that I want to get to and I, I really want to see and I really want to investigate, experience and that's one that is really interesting to me. All of these like old hospitals, sanatoriums, asylums, like I think that they're probably the most interesting places for me. Um, I know that they're probably the darkest places because, I mean, we didn't really treat people with health ailments or mental health problems as well as we should have back in, in those days. Like, it just wasn't understood fully. We've come a long way, but Waverly Hills is a big one for me. That is, I don't know, that, that would just, like, be the cherry on top of the cake, that one. I don't know. There's... There are a lot of places in the States though and that I reckon that's probably number one for me to see. But that's awesome. Thank you, Jack. Alright, so we've got another question. This one is the funder again. Uh, does Amy ever beat you, Jared? Yes. <laughs> he says yes, but I swear I don't. <laughs> he just gave me a... Uh, love note again. Oh, Rassy Boy 68 thank you so much. You are so amazing. I see your name all the time as well in my comments. This, this is really nice because I chat to you guys all the time in the comments and now I'm like responding live to you guys. It's so cool. Uh, J and K Vlogs. How long have you been doing YouTube? So I've been doing YouTube just over a year now. Um, I set it up months before I posted my first video and the reason being <laughs> was I set it up and I was like yeah maybe I'll do YouTube maybe I won't I'll just set one up and then I got too scared to be on camera I was very shy and I actually have a few videos that I made like fully filmed edited and then never released because I was like wow that's shocking like really bad and like even my first early videos I go back and I look and I'm like Ugh, why did you do that <laughs> or I watch myself trying to talk to the camera and I actually cringe like it's been yeah just over a year on YouTube and I've been working really really hard at it because I want to put out the best content that I can and when I go to these amazing locations I, I want to do them justice like I don't want to go to a place and it's amazing and then I'm just like hello because I'm scared on camera so I've worked a lot on trying to be personable and but it, it's hard for me <laughs> but yeah just over a year okay we've got everyday EVP paranormal research awesome I love to hear from other investigators that's really cool uh, when you're in Vegas, did you visit Zap Bagan's museum? Yes, I did. And I tell you what, I wasn't sure what the museum would be like. I do enjoy, enjoy ghost adventures. And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe I, I want to go see it. That's actually why we went to Vegas. Jared was like, fine, I'll take you. 
So he took me after it opened and, you know, sometimes you go to these attractions and they're a bit cheap and tacky. This was not, this was actually really amazing. So you go through and you do the tour and our tour guide was really great and told us all of the history, the stories behind everything. And it's just, everything is set up beautifully, like down to the T. All the room, different rooms are themed really well. And you walk into these different spaces and you actually get a feeling for the items that are in there. Just maybe it's just how well they're presented and put together. And it, the only thing that I felt was I just wanted to spend much longer than the tour in there. There were so many items, so many artifacts. And I, I could spend a week in there probably just going through everything. But I highly recommend that. If you're ever in Vegas, like go and check it out. It's actually really cool. Even if you're not into ghost adventures or you're not a fan of Zach, because I know people either love or hate usually. But um, yeah, go check it out. The museum's really cool. I actually caught a glimpse of um, Zach as well. We were going through and we were hanging at the back of the tour and I think he was trying to sneak into a room and I seen him and I was like, hi. We were the only people on the tour that sent in, so I don't know. We were special. <laughs> Didn't meet him though, I just waved like an idiot. But we have another live question. Jenna Randall, thank you, Jenna. This is awesome. Okay, what's your fave type of place to investigate? Hmm. My favourite type of place? Anywhere that has a lot of history or anywhere that I can get to and be alone. So sometimes when you go to investigate these places, you're there's people around or, you know, you can only access it on a tour. So you have to go and there's like public other people there. I love it when I can go somewhere and it's just like totally abandoned. It's in the middle of nowhere. It just feels really good to know that, oh, I'm out here and there is no one around. Like I don't have to worry about people screaming over there and, it, you know, like ruining the footage because you can't pick up anything. It's cool so I love the abandoned places um the most but anywhere with a lot of history I really dig so I like to learn a lot about the places before I even go there so I think that's the, the fave my fave uh, another live question oh you have a hard name okay let me let me try Lawfew Gallard I hope that that's right I'm I'm sorry but thank you so much for the question uh, what your favourite types of metal? Black, death, biking, gothic or heavy metal? Hmm, I like um, heavy metal. I also like a lot of like tacky hair metal from the 80s. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a really big 80s person. I don't, I was a 90s baby, but I think I should have been born like way earlier so that I could grow up in the 80s. I don't know. Uh... I haven't been, sadly, like since I left San Francisco and we started traveling, I haven't actually been listening to a lot of music. And that's just because when you're in a shared dorm, you know, it's kind of hard. Plus I'm usually editing. So that has taken me out of just listening to music. I used to, I used to listen to music all the time like at home, but since not having a home for a year, like I just, yeah. And I can't listen to anything while I'm editing except what I'm focusing on. So it makes it really hard. Okay. So, um, ah, oh, sorry. This is a super chat from someone. Thank you, someone. You're awesome. I know you follow me on Instagram as well. So I love that. I appreciate that. Oh, guys, it's Paranormal Resident. We have a question from Paranormal Resident. He is the loveliest chap. He's Irish and he goes to some really cool places. There's awesome places over in Ireland. Like, go check out his channel. Like, he, um, I know he's been to Lep Castle. It's, like, one of my favourite spots. Okay, uh, what do you, what are you going to ask me? Any tips on how to get more comfortable on camera? I, okay, the only tip I can give is just keep doing it because when I first started I was so I don't know awkward it just I, I would think too much about what I had to say so you guys watch my videos right you know I'll try and give a big spew about all the history and the ghost stories and all that I used to try and write a full script and 
I think because I was writing my blog as well, I wrote in a specific way and I was like, this is what I want to say. And when I couldn't hit all of those words, it would frustrate me and I would do a million takes and then I would get more frustrated at myself. And I think you've just got to keep doing it. You'll feel more comfortable as you go. And strangely enough, different environments make me feel more and less comfortable. So if I'm out on location, which is primarily what I do with filming, I feel a lot more comfortable talking to my camera and I, I don't know why that is. Whereas if I am like sitting here at home, it's a bit different now because I'm taking questions and just blabbering as I go. But if I was filming um, a sit down talking video, which I do want to start doing because I have a lot of experiences and things that have happened to me that I want to share with you guys. I find it a lot harder. I don't know why. It's just sitting down and talking to a camera. It feels less natural to me. But my goal to overcome that is just keep doing it and keep working at it. And you'll get there. I don't know. It's, it's actually really hard to talk to a camera and just, I don't know. Another live question. So Dizzy82. Where does your fear of birds come from? I have, you know what, I have no clue. I can't answer that. I can't think of anything that happened to me when I was younger that scared me with birds. And so I don't really have a reason to be scared of them. They just freak me out. I think it's um, the eyes, the beak and the feet. You know, they're like little dinosaurs, which is uh, so weird because when I was a child I was obsessed with dinosaurs. I loved Jurassic Park and I was like when I'm going to be a grown-up I'm going to be a paleontologist and I'm going to study dinosaurs and so I don't know why I don't like birds. It's not that I don't like them I, I don't want to wish any harm on the bird or anything like that I just don't want them to come near me. <laughs> So I don't know where it comes from. Even pigeons freak me out. Pigeons might actually be the worst because, you know, you're walking down the street and they're walking in front of you and you don't know where they're going and they don't either. And at any second they could fly into your face or something. So, but also those big, you know, the pred predatorial birds with the talons and the hooked beak, they freak me out. Um, if you guys are on my Patreon... <laughs> Oh, I just spat. On my Patreon, I posted a video of Jared getting bitten by a big um, cocky, like cockatoo, when we were in Sydney. And I just couldn't go out. He was feeding them on the balcony like a freak. And yeah, it bit him. So obviously, that is, don't go near birds with hooked beaks. But anyway, we, <laughs> we have another live question. This one's from Katie Ray. Hello, Katie. Thank you so much. Uh, did you ever run into any squatters? Hmm... You know, I don't know that we have. I've definitely run into their poo. <laughs> I'm Thankfully, we've never stepped into any, but we've definitely been in places where there's human, you know, they've gone to the toilet there. Or um, there may have been people living in the past or still living, they're just not there at that time. Um, uh, we did run into a guy... I don't know if he was a squatter as much as a crazy person, but we went to an abandoned school in, I think it was Malaysia, and there was a some guy running through there with, you know, no clothes on, like, Ugh. but I don't know. We'll get to that when that video comes out. <laughs> uh, Paranormal Resident again. Thank you. Uh, how did you come up with the name Amy's Crypt? Oh, okay, so... This is one that I think is important, like when you're trying to create your brand, is to think hard about because you want all your stuff to be the same. And how Amy's Crypt actually started was actually through Instagram. So I built a little bit of a following there because I was posting haunted pictures of haunted places I had traveled to. And people were following me who were also interested in visiting haunted places. And I was like, wow, there's actually a community of people out here that are interested in haunted places, ghost stories, all of the same stuff that I am. So it kind of started growing from there. And I would spend a lot of time writing the history out in my caption. And then that's why it was like, oh, okay, let's move to doing a blog, right? And my YouTube handle, uh, sorry, my Instagram handle wasn't actually Amy's Crypt, it never used to be. 
And then when I was going to do make my dot com, I was like, oh, my Instagram handle doesn't really sound spooky or creepy or anything. So it took us a couple of weeks brainstorming, like, what can we do? I still wanted to have it personalized, like it's mine, it's Amy's. This is my adventures, my travels, my experiences, you know. So Amy's something. And then Crypt kind of, I actually think it might have been Jared that came up with the name. Props to him. <laughs> He'll be so proud mm. to hear that. Um, <laughs> but we were just thinking of creepy things and Crypt, like, I love Tales from the Crypt. Like, that's so cool to me. And it's something spooky. And I don't know if it, all, if it always did, but now Amy's Crypt, when I say it, it feels like it's rolling off my tongue. Like it's natural now so I don't know if it's just because I say it so much but yeah I don't know it's a weird story how that came to be but that's kind of um what happened so before I go to this question I did get another love note uh oh, I know your name is Amy as well let me try and say the name right Emsykins thank you Amy that means the world to me so awesome you guys are here and you're supporting me and it means like everything all right, so, uh, is that an I? Benny Armin link? Oh, I'm so sorry if I didn't, I thought it was Benjamin when I first looked at it, but I think that's an I. Sorry, I'm terrible at saying the names, uh, but thank you so much for the question. That's really awesome, like, that you want to ask me something. Uh, what was the scariest place for you that you visited in Romania? Hmm. I reckon the scariest, maybe it was Hoyabachi. That forest, the forest is actually really beautiful. Like, don't get me wrong. I loved visiting there and I think that I would want to go back there just to go through the forest. And, you know, all the legends say that locals don't go through the forest, but they do. <laughs> um, but I reckon that there's something scary about that. And... The scariest part was just sleeping in a sleeping bag under the stars and we're in the middle of this notorious place so it's the dead zone and it's really like, completely dark. There was just moonlight um, and our little fire and when we kind of wrapped filming and it was like okay now we're going to go to sleep I was just like so I'm going to be like laying in the middle of this really haunted forest, like unconscious, <laughs> anything could come up or happen or, you know, I didn't sleep too well, to be honest, it was kind of freezing, but that place, that place is something else. It's quite scary. Um, we have, oh, Joey Adventures. Okay, guys, Joey has her own YouTube channel as well, and she is the biggest sweetheart. Uh, I also really like Joey because I want to get more into supporting other females who get out there in the field and explore and investigate and it's just awesome to like see other chicks out there like doing it. Okay, so Amy, what is the creepiest evidence you've ever caught? I don't think you guys have seen it yet. So I mentioned it earlier, the 99 Doors Mansion. We got we were there for hours at this place and it we wrapped our filming in the day and then we were like oh we'll just hang out for like I don't know three or four hours here until it gets dark and we start investigating so we're just sitting there there could have been no one in this house it's this huge mansion as well abandoned mansion sitting in the middle of a plantation and as soon as like the it went dark, we were hearing noises everywhere and I was like, you know, maybe it's animals, maybe it's not. Let's go into this room and investigate these weird noises. As we went to go into this room, there was footsteps. It sounded loud like it was a person. Run up the stairs right above our head and then it just stopped. And there's no way like that. I mean, it was heavy like a human footstep. There's no way it was... A person there was definitely no one else there plus the stairs that the footsteps went up are blocked at the bottom by a big gate with a lot of uh, barbed wire which you guys will see in the video there's just like there's no way that there was anyone there like I can't explain it that was pretty creepy um, that's definitely I don't know uh, 
creepy or like the best evidence. I still need to go through and edit that video, but I know that we got it on camera, so it's really cool. Okay, so we have another question. Uh, Mal J Cross, I see you in comments all the time. Thank you for being here on live. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. Okay, so did Jared feel the same way you did about the creepy and spooky when you met, or did he grow into it? Jared was the kind of guy, and he's like, let's watch a comedy. <laughs> And I was always like, nah, let's watch a horror movie. So I don't think he was so into it. He did always watch the movies with me, though. So he would always watch the horror movies. And I don't know, maybe just because he liked me. He was just like, oh, okay, we'll watch this. That's cool. But he wasn't, like, he wasn't so much into all that kind of freaky, spooky stuff. But I think he's come to like it now. He He's pretty chill. He'll kind of just be like, oh, this is what you want to do now. Um, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so, and he's super helpful with everything. I mean, as you guys know, he worked and made the Ghost Tube app. Like, how cool is that? Like, your husband, like, yeah, I'll make you an app, babe. Like, cool, thank you. Because <laughs> I don't know how to do that. But he's um really good. And he's kind of, yeah, gotten into it. Dan Tyler, six. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for the question. Uh, is there really a place called Wolf Creek? Is there, Jared? I think there I is. I don't know. So Wolf Creek, if nobody watching knows what it is, it's an Aussie movie. It's a horror movie. And it's basically uh, these tourists go to Australia, um, road trip, and there's this dude in the outback that picks them off one by one, you know, like he's crazy. And that, what is scary is that's kind of based on true events, I believe, which I don't want to scare anyone off from coming to Australia. Please come visit us because this is like an amazing country. There's so much to offer here. But yeah, this uh, based on this actual uh, tourist murder. I, uh, what's it called? Peter Falconio. Um, it's actually very sad, but I believe it's based on like an actual murder. Wolf Creek, I think, is a real place. I don't know if they're like, so the murders and Wolf Creek is associated, but I don't know, maybe you'll see it on my channel. <laughs> it seems like the kind of place that I want to go. All right, zombie. Oh, zombie, Amy's Crypt Rules. <laughs> You're the sweetest little zombie. Thank you. All right, Dr. Cocoon. Oh, that's a sick name, thank you. Uh, does security or police ever chase you away from abandoned places? No, I haven't had any uh, issues at abandoned places. There have been times where there's been security there and they've actually helped us like get access um, and see the place. Like, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, we posted the Clark Air Base Hospital in the Philippines. That place is guarded by security, but we spoke to him and he actually helped us to get access to that place. Um, and we got toured and escorted by security, as you guys might have seen in, a little bit of in the video. I've never actually been in trouble or chased by them. I have been arrested <laughs> not arrested detained by the police um when we crossed the mexico border into belize i'll say that but i'm going to talk about that more in another video because i don't know there's a lot to share and it's it was maybe one of my scariest moments but don't worry we didn't get in trouble we weren't doing anything wrong i swear i promise <laughs> all right we got j and k vlogs again thank you guys how do you find the places you investigate i spend hours and hours on the internet <laughs> talking to people. Um, I don't have any one good resource that, you know, I love when people ask this question, but it's hard to answer because there's so many different, you know, uh, resources that I use online or just talking to people. It makes it a really difficult one. Um, but what I wanted to do was turn Amy's Crypt dot com into a resource that helps other people who are like me that are traveling they're going to these places they have a specific kind of thing that they want to see they want to see something abandoned or you know i want to go to the haunted or spooky places here or 
maybe you're even local to a place and you just don't know that, you know, this one exists. So going to Amy's Crypt gives you a good rundown of what the place looks like. Um, I also put a little visiting bit at the bottom, so it's like, you can get there, you can't get there. How I managed to get there, how I managed to visit, like, is it dangerous, is it not? You know, I tried to put tips in there as well. So I'm trying to turn that into a resource that helps other people. All right, so taco explorations again. Taco, I love that. Um, have you ever been really hurt during an investigation? Hmm. I don't know that I've been hurt. I've never been, like, attacked by anything paranormal, so never scratched or anything, which, strangely enough, like, I'm a bit of a freak and I wouldn't mind it if something pulled my hair or scratched me because then I'd be like, wow, something is actually there. It's never happened to me before. Being hurt, though, I probably fall over because <laughs> I'm, I'm really clumsy. I probably fall over once per investigation. And I'm sure Jared will likely attest to that. He has like a running joke. Eh, oh, every time, Amy, every country, like I'll fall over in the worst possible way. Now, I would say the one time I got kind of hurt uh, was after going to Husker Castle. We messed up so bad and like, we always do this as well. We mess up so bad on that way. We got a lift from the lady that we were staying with to the castle. And she didn't speak very good English, so we couldn't ask for a lift back. And that place was remote. Like, you, don't, you can't get an Uber out there. So we were like, yeah, we'll walk back. It's fine. We walked for a long time. We took a trail through a forest, which you can kind of see a little tiny bit of at the end of that video. A trail through a forest and it started raining. It rained the whole time and I was saturated. It was also freezing cold. And I fell down a hill <laughs> um, in the mud and I rolled, I think I rolled my knee and my ankle at the same time. And then we had to keep walking and it was just really bad. Like it was swollen and terrible. And I think we walked for maybe three and a half hours and then we got to this cafe and the best travel story, we got to this cafe, we were having a fight. So we went in and we're like, it's warm in there, let's go in, order a hot chocolate. We were having a fight because we we're like, oh my God, it's still like another hour walk. Like I can't walk anymore. I'm saturated, I'm freezing and I'm got a hurt knee. And the young girl who was working at the cafe came up to us and was like, oh, are you guys stuck for a lift? I finish work in 15 minutes and I will drive you in my car to where you need to go and I was like oh I just wanted to hug her but I was wet and she was so lovely and just super super nice and yeah that was when we visited Husker Castle it's probably the worst I've been hurt. Mark Guy hello thank you for being here thank you for the question uh what do you think of other YouTube ghost hunting shows and the amount of activity they catch every episode this is a cool question because I feel like there are a lot of people that fake evidence out there and I think it's kind of unfortunate for the paranormal community but at the same time I understand some some of these other YouTubers should be taken with a, a grain of salt like I get that it's, it's entertaining like you watch this and you're like oh okay like people watch and enjoy and it's entertaining and I guess that is why they do it. I don't go down that route. I try to keep everything on my channel real and document what actually is happening. And that is for not just myself, but actually like my viewers. So if I find something that is actually weird, I want to know and I want you guys to know that, oh, wow, like that's crazy that that happened. What could that have been? I'm also really skeptical. So I don't jump to the conclusion that this was paranormal activity. And I think that, yeah, a lot of the times I'll go out and nothing happens and maybe there's a noise and maybe that was something, maybe it wasn't anything. But sometimes you watch these shows and they're like, whoa, this is nuts. Like all this crazy stuff happens. Like I got um, pushed or scratched or this door slammed. And I'm not saying that that didn't happen. I wasn't there. I don't know. But um in my experience, that hasn't happened to me. So, and, and I mean, 
I'm always skeptical until it actually does happen. I'm like, oh, can a ghost scratch you? And I know a lot of people that I trust and I believe and they're like, ghost scratch me. But it hasn't happened to me and it's, I think that that's what a lot of skeptics are like. They're like, I don't believe it until I see it or it happens to me. So, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of great YouTubers out there as well who I can tell are very honest with what they put forward and that is actually really great. So, all right, we got Melissa Aranda. I don't know why I said Moran, uh, Aranda, Melissa Aranda. Okay, hiya, Amy. What's been your favorite investigation? Also, which country did you enjoy visiting the most? Oh, my favorite investigations. I have so many. I always, uh, Jared agrees as well. I know because we talk about this all the time. Our favorite investigations are just the places that we have the most fun at. It's, <laughs> it's not necessarily like, oh, wow, we got the best response or anything. It was, we stayed at this place called the Skirid Inn in Wales. And that place is amazing. So it has great history for one the people there were also amazing like we were the only people staying there and we spoke to the owners and they were like oh you know like yeah here's the keys to the other rooms you can investigate the whole place no one's staying here just don't mess up the other rooms and they were really open and lovely and we just had this whole like inn and pub and everything to ourselves to investigate the whole night we loved that like it was so good so that's probably still my favorite i i mean there's a lot of amazing places we've been, but I don't know why we just had so much fun there. So I'd say that for a favourite investigation and probably Chillingham Castle. That had the same kind of feeling where it was so friendly and welcoming to like be there. But it was a place that was so amazing and rich in history and we got to do so much. And I just missed the end of that question. It was, what was it? So favourite investigations and I can't remember what the end of the question was. Favorite, oh, favorite country. How can I forget that? My favorite country that I've visited so far is Romania. Reason being is that place is beautiful. It's like, it's also not really touristy. So you go there and there's not a lot of people there. And it's a shame because Romania has so much to offer. It's just beautiful. Everyone was super friendly and welcoming and like helpful to us, um, to getting us where we needed to go. There's you know, some of the things aren't that easily accessible, but there's always someone there to tell me what to do and where to go. And I don't know, we just had, again, had the best time in Romania. So I don't know. I love that. Uh, Loretta Houston. Ah, oh, Loretta, thank you for being here. That's so cool of you. Um, was traveling together always good? <laughs> Is Jared got annoying habits? Yeah. So... We've, I mean, we've lived together for a long time. We know each other very well. And traveling is different to living with someone because when you live together, usually you have jobs, you have other things that you do. So he would go to work, I would go to work, we'd see each other. When we were traveling, we spent every waking second together. And Maybe that's why that thumbnail, it's over. People might have thought, oh, is, is it divorce? <laughs> no, we're not getting a divorce. Um, he is annoying, though. He'll say the same thing about me, though. We fight every episode. We have fight. <laughs> um, annoying habits. Uh, he gets hangry all the time. And I know you probably look at Jared and you're like, yeah, because he doesn't eat enough. But... <laughs> <laughs> he he um gets really hangry really easily and we're not very good at planning ahead so we might go somewhere and we are stuck there for like eight hours and we have no food or something and I can just kind of get through it and be nice but Jared will be nasty <laughs> um but he's okay he's all right uh gothic dragon warrior queen you're awesome you're always here to watch my videos thank you uh, can you investigate if La Llorona, the weeping woman, is real? I thought about doing um, a video on this, like in line with the movie coming out. And I just couldn't get around to doing one. I know that there's a lot of other YouTubers that have gone out and investigated and checked it out. For me, I I mean, we did travel down uh, through Central into South America last year. And the legends definitely, are, I can tell you, are prevalent there. It's not just Mexico, actually. Like, we... The legend extends downwards through other countries, too. So, in... 
oh, where was it? We went to Nicaragua and we went to a museum there. And this museum is really cool because it's actually in a haunted former prison. It has its own crazy history, but the theme of the museum is local legends, folklore, um, and a lot of ghost stories as well. And La Llorona was one of them. So they're like, yeah, they definitely believe her in lots of different areas. But then you look at the other side of the legend and it's like, okay, so it's in these more rural areas where there's waterways and they tell it to little kids and maybe it's just one of those things that let's tell our kids that the water is scary and keep them away from the water so they don't go and play in the water and you know do something silly like drown so there's a bit of thinking as with all legends and ghost stories there's like oh how did this come to be which i always find interesting but i don't know <laughs> It's not prevalent here in Australia, so I can't really go out and investigate her here. Um, I'm sorry. So we've got paranormal voice again. So what I might do is I'm going to answer a paranormal voice question. And then I'm going to show you guys my catacombs intro trailer for my second part. And this one is a little bit longer and a little bit more intense. So things got like crazy down there. But paranormal voice, thank you uh, for this question. Uh, do you collect souvenirs from each location you visit? I have a magnet collection. <laughs> um, so because we backpack, I have a really small bag. Like my bag's not very big. It's 32 litres or something. It's tiny. Um, so I can't carry a lot. Um, I fought ahead. <laughs> I used to collect magnets. So uh, all these different cities that we would go to, I'd have a magnet for and have them at home. And then when we were like, okay, we're going to backpack, I was like, well, why want to keep the magnet collection rolling? I couldn't afford to have space for that many magnets. So it was more like one magnet per country was my allowance. And the only country I missed, I've got one for every country we visited. I missed Wales. I... I just couldn't find a magnet in Wales. Like, if anyone finds a magnet from Wales, let me know. Maybe I can pay you to send it to me or something. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the only one I'm missing. So, now, let's get to the catacombs. This is a little bit of a sneak peek into what it was like to go down into the forbidden section of the Paris catacombs. And be warned, it's a little bit dark, it's a little bit scary. But I think you guys are going to dig it. Down into the actual catacombs. The tunnel's getting smaller. <laughs> Pitch black in here as well. Are you okay? We're gonna crawl on our stomachs over the top of the bones because that's how high they're stacked to the roof now. I'm about to crawl into a bone pit. How did you die? piled up with human bones. There might be other people down here. I think so. Alright, I'm back. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought about that. That was maybe one of the craziest adventures we've had on Amy's Crypt. It was... I don't know, it was just something else down there. I'm very lucky and fortunate to have been able to go down and investigate and see that place. It was, I don't know, somewhere that I've always wanted to go. Okay, so I've got another question. I'm going to keep taking questions for maybe like the next half hour-ish. We, as we were joking in the chat earlier, like, yeah, we, we want to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to keep answering as many questions for like the next half hour. So shoot them into the chat for me. Um, but yeah, if I miss any comment on this live stream, I'm just going to keep it up on my channel. And this has been really fun as well. My nerves are completely gone, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we've got... Oh. Yushishwa1. Yushishwa1. Thank you. Um, do you have a theory on how places slash things become haunted or how ghosts come to be? I have my own theory, so I'm always interested in hearing others' thoughts. 
So I do have a few theories and they kind of correlate to like other people's theories. And it's always cool to hear what you guys think as well. So I like that you have your own theories about this. I think if ghosts do exist, which is kind of like why I'm not really scared of ghosts, is they're just people. Like um, maybe it's, I don't know if it's a soul, I don't know, or there's some other thing going on, energy or what. But I feel like if there are ghosts that exist, then it could just be, you know, the energy left over from people who have, yeah, died. And maybe they haven't gone on to their next journey. I mean, who knows, there might not even be a next journey. It might just be you die and that's it. But I mean, there's also a lot of thoughts about like residual type hauntings. And I find that really interesting as well. Like I know people also think, oh, you're appearing into another dimension or different things like that. But I kind of think that the theory about residual energy is kind of interesting. And maybe that is why, you know, I go to places like that mansion I was talking about earlier and you hear footsteps run up. I swear there was no one there. Like what could that have been? Maybe it was, you know, it wasn't even anyone there. It was just something residual remembering running up the stairs like it's so interesting to think about but I mean none of us really know that's end of day it's all all the theories and I don't know I wish that I knew I guess we will find out one day but till that day comes so we've got taco back thank you taco uh what's your favorite scary movie my favorite scare oh I, I feel like I need to say it in the um the screen voice what's your favorite scary movie uh, my favourite is A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. I love that so much. I kind of like the other, like the sequels to it. Uh, Dream Warriors would be my favourite sequel. But yeah, the original, I don't know. I love Freddy. I love Johnny Depp. Like, it's just such a good movie. Uh, Lord Few Gallard. Amy, do you like beer? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I do enjoy beer. <laughs> uh, tacos back. Uh, do you believe in skinwalkers? I don't know. I know a lot of people have gone and uh, investigated like Skinwalker Ranch and all that. And I think it's interesting. I don't know if I believe it though. I guess i got to go and check it out. Like what do you guys reckon I should go check that out? <laughs> I think that would be an interesting one. So the funder, wow, what does old catacomb bones smell like? Dry, moldy socks? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't actually remember it smelling down there. It was, um, I thought it was going to be cold because when we went down into the tourist side, it is actually quite cold down there. But when you go to the forbidden side, it's hot. Like we were rugged up because it was getting, you know, later in the year in Paris, it was starting to snow. And then we went down and I was like, holy moly, it is boiling hot down here. Plus we were running around and climbing through little holes and, you know, walking like hunchback style. But I don't remember it smelling. It's interesting though. So I guess all the flesh has gone from the bones, but I don't know. Uh, Deanna H, thank you for the question. Amy, you're coming back to the USA anytime soon. I want to come back and I do have plans to come back. I don't know how soon it will be. Um, we're, uh, Jared and I are throwing up all sorts of ideas. I mean, we've only just got back and we're already saying, well, we'll move back to the States and yeah, we'll do all this stuff. But I don't know when or what will happen, but I'm definitely coming back. To, I've got to come back and investigate. There's so many amazing places that I missed when I was over there. So I, yeah, personally, I'm... Totally down for it. <laughs> um, so we've got Dan back. Thank you, Dan. Would you like to visit Pavelia Plague Island in Venice? Yes. So Pavelia, we were actually looking at that uh, while we were in Europe. Um, I had visited a couple of years before we were last in Europe, uh, Venice, and it's such a beautiful place. Like, I didn't even know at that stage, I was really young. I didn't even know that Pavelia existed. And then the more I learned about it, the more intriguing it is. I don't know if you can get there and like get onto the island, if it's legal or anything like that. We didn't get too far along checking that out. But what killed me the most was when we were in Italy, we 
we're kind of coming to the end of our time in Europe and we had to get out of Europe because of visa stuff. So we quickly did a trip through some places in Italy because I love it. And we were, we had to get to um, Salzburg for the Krampus runs. Like that was the goal. So we're like, Oh, quick, we got to quickly get up there. We passed through um, Venice on a train and we had 15 minutes there. <laughs> so if you've ever been to like Venice, you know, the train station, it's, you walk out and it's like the canals and the bridges and it's beautiful. So I walked off the train, I walked out and I was like, oh, it's lovely here. And then I walked back to get on another train for like however many more hours we were on the train. So it was a little bit of a tease, but maybe one day I'll make it there. It's, I definitely want to make it back to Europe. I love Europe so much. Ah, uh, Randy Johnson. Hello, Randy. Uh, would you ever come to the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, my hometown? Hotel is very haunted. I, oh, you've seen apparitions there. Wow. I've heard a lot about the Driscoll and I have been there, but only taken some photos there. I never stayed there. So what is cool is I know Austin quite well. I lived in Austin for a couple of months because I don't know if you know the Alamo Draft House cinema chain. I actually worked for them. Um, I was based in San Francisco though, so I did get to come to Austin quite a bit and check out a lot of the cool stuff. Um, uh, like Fantastic Fest was really cool. I got to make it over there for that too. But the Driscoll, that is beautiful and that's really cool that you've seen apparitions there. I would love to investigate that place, hopefully one day. I think if I do come back to the States, I'll definitely return to Austin to see everyone I know over there. Uh, Law, Lawfu, I need to learn how to say these names. Thank you for another question. Uh, do you already visited the Church of Satan in San Francisco? No, I know a lot about like, oh, what was his name? Uh, Andre Lafeu? Le, I don't even know how to say it. Uh, so I know that there was a lot of the um, black church satanic stuff um, going on back in the day in San Francisco. And I, I think that the house, which was it the church, it, I know that it was like painted black. I, I remember seeing photos of it. That has been demolished, that one. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. But that got demolished and I believe like there's another house built on the space that that, one, that other house once sat. And I think that that one's supposed to be haunted, which I don't know, wouldn't surprise me to be honest, but there's a lot of places in San Francisco I didn't really get to hit, but all right. Everyday EVP Paranormal Research. Hello again. Uh, have you uh, considered investigating with other investigators? Yes. <laughs> so I really want to get into trying to do more collabs and I would love to collab with people and actually meet with other investigators. That would be ideal for me to actually be there and be with someone. And I got to in India, actually. So I met with um, another YouTube team. Uh, they're called Pairs Paranormal. P-A-I-R-S. Pairs Paranormal. And they were really great. They were based in uh, Navi, Mumbai. And they took me out to a secret... Secret? A secret location. It hasn't been on my channel yet because... I've gotten so behind in work, I haven't been able to edit this one and I want to pre-edit it and send it to them so they can kind of go through and see if any words come through in Hindi um, and point them out to me kind of thing before I release it. So I'm just a little bit behind and I'm trying to get that collab out for you guys. But I have, yeah, I, I really want to meet up with some other investigators. Like, I, I think that would be amazing. That would be something that, I would like to do it's just been hard with travel and I'm never in one spot long enough to do it so zombie uh, thank you zombie you are the best question uh, would you ever make a bloopers video of you falling over <laughs> um, it would make a great special episode for Amy's crypt we have spoken a lot about bloopers outtakes like funny things that have happened to us and making like a comedic kind of episode and I'm sure that there's some footage of me falling down somewhere. I reckon we might have some footage of me falling over at the teacher's camp in Baguio in the Philippines. That's the only one I... Because, mm, I don't know, I trip over a lot, so I'm sure there's probably a few. But a blooper reel would be pretty good, I think. <laughs> 
uh, Rebecca Tindall. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate all of these questions always, everybody. Uh, what do you think of Amityville Horror House? If you could, would you visit there? I totally would visit. I really would. And I actually get a lot of people recommend me going here and checking this place out. What is hard about this one for an investigator, it's, it's such an interesting case and I'm sure it's something that a lot of investigators would love to go and check out. I mean, because it's so famous. That house is actually, I mean, last I checked, was a private residence. And the people that live there, such as with a lot of supposedly haunted places, don't like to open their house up to investigators for to come through and investigate. And I can totally respect that and get that. Um, I think it would be weird having people come through your house. The other thing that makes me think about the Amityville is, oh, so it's a private residence. There's people living there now. Like, are those people okay? <laughs> you know, the, all the stories that come out of that place, like maybe it's, you know, they've cleansed it or whatever. Like, is I would be interested to know if they've had any experiences living there. Um, so that's an interesting one, but not one that I think that I'll be able to check out. I mean, unless circumstances change with the owners of the property, you know what I mean? Uh, paranormal resident, thank you for more questions. Weirdest food you have ate traveling? Whoa. Weirdest food? I think because I am a vegetarian, I don't tr get to try too much crazy stuff like, oh, I ate a spider leg or, or something like that <laughs> uh when when i did eat meat previously i did try snails and frog legs last time i was in france years and years ago when i was much younger um but mm, weirdest jared what's the weirdest food we've eaten vegetarian mcdonald's vegetarian mcdonald's <laughs> yeah so in india guys they have a big vegetarian menu and it's pretty cool they're big mac is like called the Maharaja Mac and you get veggie patties. I don't know. It's pretty weird, I guess. Uh, Mike Heaps. Thank you heaps, Mike, for this question. Heaps is a South Aussie saying, by the way. Uh, would you ever do any urban legend games like Bloody Mary or the Closet Game or Hide and Seek by yourself? Hmm. I kind of like the premise and the idea of paranormal games. I haven't played any kind of on video. I know I've done Bloody Mary before, like when I was a kid. Um, and I don't know, we haven't really delved into any of that. But if anyone wants to sit out on my channel, like, let me know. Uh, I don't know how real all the games are or if they're more just for kids to play and have fun. But I guess it's like interesting to test that out and yeah, just delve into something a bit different. That's a cool suggestion too. Uh, Marlene Wilcox. Thank you, Marlene. Thanks for being here and the question. Have you been to London, England, Amy? Yes, we um, flew from Buenos Aires to London and we stayed there for a couple of weeks. And I love London. London is one of my favorite cities. I don't know why. The whole, um, all, all over England, I think because I have a lot of ancestry from over there, I feel more connected to the history and I'm really, really interested in it. And I love London. One of my favourite places over there. Of course, I love the Tower of London, but it is super, super busy. There's millions of people going there, but I'll probably visit that place every single time I go to London in my life. The, um, there's an old operating theatre there as well, and I've got that on my channel. That's a hidden gem, a lot of history, and it's just really cool to go visit. I, I like that, that place in London. Uh, Hugo Lopez, thank you. Uh, not sure if you answered this. What does it take to start paranormal investigations? Love your work. Oh, thank you so much. Um, what does it take to start? I mean, if you want to go out and investigate, I think research... Uh, so finding places that you can access and go to and that are safe. I think the best way to start as well, which is kind of how I started, to be honest, um, there is, in Adelaide, at least, there's a business um, called Haunted Horizons. And basically what they do, and there's a, a lot of these types of business all over the world, guys, you probably have some that are local to you. Haunted Horizons takes groups of people to haunted places and gives them tours 
they go over history and the ghost stories. So they'll be like, oh, in this room, this kind of thing happens, or people see a man down the hall, you know, they'll tell things that have happened, um, a little bit of the background and history of the place. But they also sometimes do investigations. So you can actually stay with them and they've got all the gadgets. It's amazing. Um, so, you know, spirit boxes, REM pods, they've got all of the best stuff and they show you how to use them, how they work, and then you actually get to use them yourself and test them. So I think that that's a really great introduction for anyone wanting to get into investigating that hasn't done it before, doesn't have any gear. Plus, I totally highly recommend Haunted Horizons if you're in SA or Adelaide or in the area ever. Like, I had the best experiences with them. I, I just think that so great. Uh, another question, uh, Marie Brown, thank you. Uh, have you been to Canada to do any investigating? Mm, I have been to Canada. So I've only visited Vancouver and I was there for just over a week. I haven't explored anywhere else in Canada, unfortunately, but I really, really want to. We had the best time in Vancouver. People from Canada, uh, they have the biggest hearts. They're really lovely people. And I mean, Vancouver was lovely. I didn't get to really investigate. I visited a few haunted places and have written about them on amyscrypt.com. Um, but I haven't actually got to go out and investigate anywhere there. So I think that I'll be back there at one, one stage in my life and I would love to check out more of the country. It was just beautiful and everyone was so nice to me. So uh, I did love that. Another question from Jessie Stark. Would you like to visit the Winchester house? Yes. So I've actually visited, I think I've been two or three times. So the living in San Francisco, the Winchester Mystery House is actually pretty close to me. So I went and took um, some of, you know, when the relatives come to visit, I'd take them over and they all loved it. I never did investigations or the night tours or anything. So I've just done the general day tour. But that house is beautiful. It's so amazing. And I think that the history related to uh, Sarah and just the house in general is just really, really cool and super different. And yet you go there and it's just like, what do the stories say? All of the weird rooms and the staircases and everything's just bizarre in that place. Like it's, it seems like a fun house, but it's a legit, just like this big house. I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, Joseph. Petrachi. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph, for watching and for the question. That all, these all mean so much to me, guys. Uh, what do you think about the paranormal shows on TV? I actually love watching them. I think it's kind of cool uh, to watch them. I know, like, they seem more sensationalised and that, but I understand it's all for entertainment. They really do bring the history out and, you know, investigating and make it entertaining to watch. And I hope that, you know, my little YouTube videos, I aspire to have them as captivating the whole way through as a TV show. And I, I think I still have a long way to go, um, but I'm balancing that fine line between being too sensationalised and showing you truly how it is. So I'm trying to work with that but I love all the paranormal shows I, w I watch so much of them I think it's really cool and it, it helps you understand the history and the locations better as well so it's always cool to visit a location that I've seen on tv and I'm like oh ghost adventures were here <laughs> I don't know I love that uh Lisa's life thank you Lisa you're always so nice to me in my comments thanks for being on the live stream as well would you ever go to the Queen Mary? I believe it's in California. If you go during Halloween, great haunt. Ah, oh, I've heard all about the haunted houses at the Queen Mary. I have visited as well. So this was before I was filming for Amy's Crypt. It was also before, what's the haunted room? I think B B52, wait, is that a band? <laughs> what's the haunted room, Jared? You B guys know it. Four or something. Too. Yeah, it's B something. Um, the most haunted room wasn't actually set up as a hotel room when I visited. So we got to go through on the tour and see it, but it was just a bare room. So I know that you can stay there now and it's really cool and I want to go back. Something else that is cool is I got the weirdest photo there. Like you, you always hear about people capturing ghosts and photos and weird things in photos. And I actually think that that's a really difficult thing to do and it's really rare. But when I was on a tour in the Queen Mary, I took a photo and 
I picked up a figure walking through the pool room, which was empty. Um, and the blocked off, the staff said that no one's allowed in there, like no staff, no like patrons, no one's allowed in there, you can't go in there. So I put uh, my camera up through the bars, snapped a few photos. In one of those photos, there's a person, <laughs> uh, like a dark shadow figure. Um, so yeah, that was pretty crazy. And maybe I should do a video one day <laughs> and show you guys. I actually think that that picture is somewhere on my Instagram at Amy's Crypt. So if you guys go to my Instagram and scroll very far back for a lot of my photos, you might find it. But I don't know what was with that. That was, I don't know. I'll have to talk more about it one day on a video with you guys. Roy Smith, thank you for the question. Have you ever felt like a spirit followed or attached itself to you? You know, I don't think so. I don't know. I, I don't believe that I have any attachments or anything. I know I just recently did a video where my spirit box said Vanessa, which was kind of an odd name or something to pick up in the middle of India, plus it's my sister's name. So I don't know, I, I guess it doesn't mean that I had anything following me. Um, I have had some weird things happen that I was like, oh wow, maybe I got a spirit attachment. But then it was like, oh, it's probably not. I had this weird experience when I was in Peru. I got very sick. And then we flew to Cusco, which is like where you start before you go to Machu Picchu. And the elevation's like super crazy. So people usually stay there for a few days because they get altitude sickness. So I think I had, I was sick, then we flew there and then I got altitude sickness. And I was having really weird sleep. And I swear there was something like down next to my bed growling at me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. But I was all just loopy because I was so sick but I don't think anything's followed me but we'll see see, see if I bring any ghosts home <laughs> uh okay we've got dead rabbit 666 uh FTRS hmm Terran okay <laughs> Terran <laughs> uh did you ever use a Ouija board I have used a Ouija board a couple of times I had an interesting experience with one in the Lizzie Borden murder house. I do have a video on that, but this experience isn't in the video because my camera battery had died because I'd been filming and doing stuff on it all day. But basically the Ouija board was just moving when me and another girl that I met on this tour um, were using it. And it was kind of just moving for us. And then... You, I feel like with Ouija boards you're always like, I'm not, I swear I'm not moving it. Maybe the other person's moving it, you know? So I thought, oh, let me test. And I said, do you know what my middle name is? And it spelled out my middle name. So I'm not going to tell you what it is, just in case I need to ever, you know, test it, use that test again. <laughs> but it spelled out my middle name and I was like, whoa, you wouldn't have known my middle name, would you? She's like, no, like we, we just met. And she was really, really lovely as well. We're uh, friends on Instagram still. But it was just odd that it would say that. So unless it was, you know, my own brain and me thinking so hard about it that my hand was just drawn to the letters of my name. I don't know. But it was weird and I would use one again. I'm not scared of them. I have seen the horror movies. I know all the bad things that can go wrong, but I do feel like it's probably just another way to communicate with spirits. It's just the same as using a spirit box or reaching out, I guess. So, uh, Lofia again, thank you. Uh, do you ever have some rituals before you visit some place? Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this my last question. It seems like a good one to finish on. And I know, guys, we need to get ready for Game of Thrones. So, Rituals before we visit a place. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't. <laughs> my ritual is kind of just charging my camera gear, making sure I've got research notes. If it's somewhere that has a foreign language, usually I'll have translations ready to go so I can do my best to reach out in the um, language that the spirits probably spoke when they were alive. Uh, I feel that's important to at least try to do. Um, 
and just figuring out how we're getting there, what we're doing. That's kind of my ritual. I don't have anything spiritual um, or anything like that. So and I don't do anything really after the investigations. Normally I'm just so tired. I come home and I crash or I just get to work on Amy's crypt. So I don't know. I think it seems to be working for me so far. I have, as I said, I don't think I've got any attachments. So I guess it's my own personal little ritual, but it's not really what most people would consider like a ritual. But I am going to start wrapping things up now, guys. This has been really, really fun. And if you did like this live stream, make sure you physically like, you know, leave me a comment as well if I missed any questions or you have other things that you want to ask or this has spurred on more um, questions. Leave me comments on this video. I'm going to be on it today. I'm going to do my best to answer as many as I can. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want me to do more live streams if you're excited for live investigations coming up. Now, what I'm going to do after this live stream, I'm going to set up a premiere for my Catacombs number one video. And that one is coming on Sunday. So one more week, guys, and you get to watch it. I'm so excited. I'll be on the live chat in the premiere as well. And remember, no video on Wednesday, so please don't freak out about my welfare. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm just at home probably hanging out with uh, my family or something. So um, none of that. Oh, my gosh, like so many chats coming up. This is awesome. Thank you guys all so much for being here. If you want to keep up with me, you guys can follow me on social media at Amy's Crypt. I'm on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I'm going to try and keep those all updated for you all week so that you know that I'm doing okay because there's no video on Wednesday. But I'll be back Sunday straight after this live stream. I'm setting up a premiere so you can like set a reminder so you don't forget to watch it. And then the Wednesday after we've got Catacombs, The Forbidden Catacombs Part 2. So that's going to be really cool. But yeah, I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart that you're all here. It really does mean everything to me and you're really helping me on this journey. Like, I couldn't do it without all of you guys. You're the best. And look at you all, like, chatting here. It's so great. All right, so I'm going to play my little exit now. And thank you guys. We'll see, we'll see you on Sunday, all right?